Definitely. All righty. Well, I guess we should get started and meet Dan Becker. Dan, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So I am uh, just a uh, very lucky guy. I get to make videos online and travel and go backpacking. And I've been doing that for since 2018, been backpacking for 10 years. And uh, I'm <clears throat> learned everything on my own. And yeah, no, I travel and go on lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of backpacking trips. So do you remember yeah. what your first backpacking trip was? I do. Yeah, it was right here in Wisconsin in the Kettle Moraine, the southern unit. I hiked in like maybe a mile. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fun. It was a good time. That's Worst awesome. night of my life. Worst night of your life. Yes, no way. Because the, I slept in a hammock and we... I couldn't sleep. It was horrible. I got claustrophobic. I was up for like four hours. And then oh. for some reason I was addicted and wanted to go back. Yes. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, are you competitive? Did you want to do better the I, next time? You know, I, I'm not super competitive, but yes, I did want to do better the next day. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Dan has been an Onyx Backcountry ambassador for several years now and we value this partnership and the relationship that we've built with Dan over the years and we're very excited to have him with us and we have a bunch of surprises for you guys up our sleeve tonight as well. Um, you're probably wondering who I am and why I'm talking so much. I am Emily. I am uh, the Onyx Backcountry Marketing Manager. We have a solid team here at Onyx Backcountry, um, and I am honored to be with you all tonight. I mentioned I live in Utah. Um, I love backpacking, mountain biking, climbing, ski touring, all of it. So for those of you who have been to Utah or who live in Utah, um, you know, you can kind of do it all here. So, uh, that is, that's a little bit about me. So I'm going to walk you through kind of what the agenda looks like for this evening. Uh, we'll do some introductions, talk about backpacking 101 for some of the beginners on this call. Um, and then we will jump into our backcountry demo. Um, Dan is going to take us through one of the hikes that he has done uh, up in the Sawtooth Mountains in Idaho. Um, we're going to learn how to use Onyx backcountry in the field. And then we will have a giveaway and uh, maybe 10 minutes at the end for answering some of your questions. So this is the appropriate time to let you all know that the chat box that most of you have been writing in already is different than the Q and A. So you should see in your screen there, um, there's a box that, uh, is just for Q and A's. It has a little word bubble and then a question mark in it. So if you click that, submit your questions there. And we have someone on the back end uh, working with us to try and answer as many of those as possible. We also have um, a sheet that we will be using uh, to track down some of the answers and keep track of the answers that we want to hit on at the end and ask Dan himself. So without further ado, we have teased a 70% off code to you earlier this week. Here it is. All of you who have joined, um, we're giving you 70% off this evening for the Onyx Backcountry app. So take this time, scan it, or visit the bit.ly link below uh, if you're not able to, to scan for that 70% off Onyx Backcountry. And I'll give you guys uh, a couple more seconds here to get your phones out and make sure that you don't miss out on... The 70 percent. If you're not scanning it, you're making the biggest mistake of your life. I'm just saying right now because 70 percent off is ridiculous. That is, that, I think you did that one other time, and I talked about it like once. I was like, "Hey, 70 percent off," and I, I think we broke the internet. I think we did. It was, was it was insane. Um, yeah, that's like five dollars. Who said that? <laughs> of course, Devin. I know we're we're giving it away. So we're giving it away. Um, yeah, I believe we'll be showing this again at the end. So if your phone slipped down into the couch cushion and you can't get it at the moment, 
don't worry, we can show this again at the end. So um, another fun thing is we're going to be giving away five Onyx Backcountry hats uh, at the end of this masterclass and five Onyx Backcountry Elite membership cards. So this QR code is to enter that giveaway. Um, Dan can talk a little bit more about this, but we are also going to be giving away two subscriptions to his Couch to Confidence course. Dan, do you want to touch on what that is uh, a little bit here for some of the people who might not be familiar? Yes, I do. You should ask. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh. So I, this is three years in the making. Um, I wrote. Uh, I, <clears throat> I I got frustrated with YouTube just being like this really horrible rabbit hole of information and you can never really find exactly what you're looking for. And like, if you know, you're wanting to learn something specific about backpacking and whatever. And uh, you, you have to search all these videos and some of them are good and some of them aren't. And so I just decided that I was going to try to fix that because I was frustrated to learn that way. Cause that's how I learned on YouTube. So I wrote a course and I took 400 or so videos of mine and condensed them down into 18 and it's all online and uh it's we, we work really really hard on it we spent months and months and months and months there's a team of people that helped me with this and then wrote this book it's a 58 page workbook and uh yeah i made it super easy so like my mom could take this class and then probably be here next week doing a onyx webinar that's how that's that's how that's how I wrote this. And there's something so nice too about having a hard copy to reference back on or to take with you on a, a backpacking trip. Um, so you're not having to, you know, fumble through yeah, YouTube videos or if you don't have service, you have it right with you and um something to take notes in. And yes. Yes. very, very cool. Um, oh, it looks like people have already bought it. Wow, holy cow. If you've bought it, I would love to know. I I've got like very little feedback from people, so I would just love to know. Uh, anyway, we can move on, but I would love Positive to know. Email comments me, only. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd love to know. What Very cool. Yeah. Well, we will be giving away two subscriptions to Dan's Couch Confidence course. Um, if you're new to backpacking, this seems to be a must have um, and just a very, very good resource for um, all of you who are not sure sure where to start, but but wanting to. Um, before we dive in, I also want to just touch on Onyx Backcountry. Um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with um, the app and all it has to offer, but we also here at Onyx Backcountry, Backcountry believe that we have a responsibility mm -hmm. to protect adventure forever. So we support access initiatives uh, throughout the United States and beyond, inspiring users to be good stewards of the places that they recreate. So this evening, we're going to be doing a mock uh, backpack trip planning. And in that, we will be touching on um, some of the ways to best be good stewards um, to make sure that the places that we love don't get loved to death. Um, and if you guys have questions uh, regarding any best practices, uh, we can do our best to answer those questions. Um, there's a lot around this topic and we are here to do our best to um, steer everyone in a direction that will uh, not impact the land that we love so much. So without further ado, we can kind of jump into it. Um, I'm going to be doing some talking right now and then I'm going to turn it over to Dan when we get to more of the demo portion. Um, and let him kind of take it away uh, when we get into the app. So for those of you who are here, I'm sure you know that Onyx Backcountry offers um, a hike mode. And we have a ton of content in the app for backpacking, day hiking, trail running, etc. So you could wonder where we got a lot of this information from. Um, and we acquired a lot of the information from Hiking Project and Outdoor Project. We um, acquired them and were able to integrate all of this really rich content into our app. And um, 
iterate it. So there are offline maps with it now, there's 3D, um, there's tracking, all of that. So we, um, we have the extensive database for all of this. Um, and we are very lucky to have people like you uh, using the, the user-generated um, content to, to make sure that we're giving you guys all the best experience. So um, like I said, we've taken the trails from hiking project and outdoor project and leveled them up with Onyx to make uh, the, the planning tool even better. Um, offline experience, which we'll get into when we do the demo. Uh, route Builder, we now have Snap2, which makes routes in record timing, uh, and private and public lands. So you always know that you are not trespassing or you're camping on the right BLM land and not someone's uh, private property, which is good for everyone. All right, Dan, backpacking. Yes. <laughs> How did you start backpacking? That is a really good question. Um, <laughs> the super short uh, story is that um, uh, I had I, I got a group of friends that you know back in I'm from I'm from Wisconsin and really very little backpacking happens here like at all if any, and uh, a group of friends of mine uh, we just like every month we would do kind of something like kind of manly and somebody <laughs> said um, it's it's coming up for us to hang out we should all like go hang out in the woods with only the stuff we could fit in a backpack. And I was like, oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Yes. And uh, I started researching on YouTube like weeks ahead. And I'm like, I've got an addictive personality when it comes to that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's that was literally it. And that was the hike in quarter of a mile or about a mile or so. I had the worst night's sleep of my life. For some reason, I started hammock camping because that was those are the videos I fell into. That first time? Yep. First time ever was in a hammock. Oh and, my God. Uh, that's how I started. Yeah, it was, I, I hammock camped for a few years, several years. And then, um, yeah, I don't really do it much anymore, but yeah, how's your, yeah, that was it. Yeah. And nobody, like nobody in Wisconsin backpacks. So this was like, um, I had to find, I had to, I had to force, I had to, I had to, I had to make people become backpackers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Inspire. <laughs> inspire. Yeah, I inspire them. And everybody's like, oh, I don't have gear. So, so I had to buy two of everything. So then after that first experience, um, and you were like, okay, that was a horrible night's sleep, but I want to learn more about this. I want yes. to become kind of an expert in this topic, research as much as possible, get better gear, et cetera. Um, and would you say that, that, what did that look like for you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I was hyper addicted to the idea there was something about because i had never i'd never experienced camping like that before so people that live like where you live in utah i mean you just you know you open up your back door and you're backpacking essentially like here that just doesn't really happen so i was so attracted to this like idea of you know getting to a place that you can only get to by hiking there and then seeing things that you can only see when you're hiking there and uh so yeah and i felt like i was like the one percent of the one percent of the one percent of the population that did it yeah. and then when i'd come back and i'd be like oh my gosh you guys got to see this like well, how'd you do it well i slept in a tent and they're like yeah no forget it you know so but it, it for me it was um you know just researching gear watching tons of videos tons of videos buying constantly buying the wrong stuff doing the wrong thing learning from my mistakes until i finally figured out what works for me Mm -hmm. And I, you know, so yeah, I, I think it's just a matter of um, embracing the pain of the experience that comes with backpacking because it's, yeah, there's something that's just not fun, but it's also fun. 100% you know? type two fun. I would say it's very similar. I, um, moving out to Utah and out in the West, it is very accessible. You see a peak in the distance, and you're like, how can I? How can I get there? Oh, it's a 60 mile trail. You can't, you know, drive there and, and summon it. So you put everything on your back and, and you get out there. And I think there's something very, very cool. And I think obviously a lot of people resonate with the, the sentiment that 
I'm just going to be using what is on my back, you know, yeah. and there's yeah. something very cool about that. And uh, a huge accomplishment when you get back to the car at the end of the trip. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm always ready uh, to get back to the car. Yeah. <laughs> always ready. <laughs> yes. How did you first find places to go backpacking? That was horrible. I mean, it absolute nightmare. Like I didn't know what to do because um, public lands in Wisconsin are very few and far between. Like this whole area is just very, there There are some, but it's, it's just minuscule. They're very difficult to find. So I went on like Google maps and this is going to sound so terrible. I went on Google maps and I, re I, I would look for like the green blobs on a map and like just zoom in as close as I could to see if there was like big areas of woods that I could somehow get into. Oh, like that's yeah. literally how I did it. Yes. And then I would obviously like Google, you know, places to backpack or whatever. And it was always out of my reach because it was like halfway across the country and it was like a dream trip and it was going to cost so much money and backpacking is supposed to be cheap, right? You're like, I'm just hiking. I'm walking somewhere. Like I shouldn't have to pay a lot of money, but unfortunately you got to pay for flights and the hotels and all that stuff to get out there. So Yeah. It was a nightmare, but um, yeah, that's how I, that's, that's yeah. essentially how I do it. And then I, then I would actually call like national park headquarters and state park headquarters and just talk to rangers. I literally yes. would just in my free time, jump on a call just to talk to rangers and just ask like, as if I was going to go, go backpacking, but I wasn't because right. I wanted to, yeah, I'm like, Hey, so uh, tell me about the camping out there, you know? What, <laughs> yeah what's your favorite campsite? And I just write stuff down just to like right. learn and see what they'd say. And I had no intention of going. Right. Great resource to though, too, just to tap into the, yeah, the resources of the Rangers and um, some of the different government sites that are out there too, that can kind of help shepherd you in the right direction. If you kind of know a region where, where you want to go. Yeah. Um, very cool. And then you just slowly started to acquire the gear, I'm assuming. Yes. I very slow. Walmart was my best friend for like the first six months. Yeah. Like maybe a year. And yeah, that was, I learned real quick that I was not going to go to Walmart anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is a great place to start if, you know, if you don't have, have the gear and you're, you're wanting to get out there on yes. lighter yes. budget. So yes, yes, totally. Very oh, cool. Goodness. Very cool. Uh, everyone has to start somewhere. I actually remember on my first backpacking trip, my friend gave me an old pair of her running shoes. And at the end of the backpacking trip, I had blisters like you would not <laughs> believe like yeah. half dollar bill size, like so big. I was like, crawling. It felt like I was crawling back to the truck afterwards, but you live and learn, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. yeah, blisters. I, I remember getting blisters. I, I've since figured out how to not get blisters. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Yes. It's, a, it's, it's an art, it's an art form. No. Um, awesome. Well, we are going to hop into the demo. Bear with me. I'm going to switch screens here and get into the live demo portion of today. So in the meantime, ask Dan any question you would like. In ask the me any <laughs> question. You may not get the, an answer. Yeah, right. That you want, but you will, you can ask any question you like. Five favorite pieces of gear. Oh my gosh. I have no oh, idea. Oh, that's a great My question. problem is that, yeah, at this point I've got too much gear. So does anybody want to know what I do with my gear? Everybody thinks I like, I give my gear away. But not you? to you. I do. I give it to a camp, the same campground. Oh, very cool. Big family camp in Northern Wisconsin. I drive a truckload of gear out there every year. Very cool. Yeah. Um, are you able to see my screen? Uh, Tenkara fish. I've never done it. Okay. But I want to. I'm not a, I'm not a fly fisherman. I'm a spin caster. Uh, I can see your screen. Yes. Okay. Um, so we are in the desktop of Onyx Backcountry. Welcome to all of you who have been here and who are new here. Um, Dan has shared a link with me 
And this is kind of what I'm looking at right now. I'm going to zoom out um, and I'm going to do a brief um, kind of tour of what we're, we're all looking at. I'm going to start at the lower left hand corner. This is my account. Um, this is where you can go to customize your account and um, make sure that all of the features are turned on that you would like to be turned turned on. Um, statistics are here in your um, left hand panel. Uh, here you can see um, stats from the years that you have um, been a member of Onyx Backcountry. So content right above it is where you're going to find all of your tracks, um, routes, waypoints, lines, et cetera. So this is a very, very important place to be. Um, if you're on the mobile app, this is actually going to be at the, at the lower bar. Um, but if you have tracked a route and it disappears for some reason, you just click on the, my content and your tracks will be there mm -hmm. along with any shared folders, etc. Offline maps, uh, very, very important are right here above it. So you can see what you have downloaded offline um, before you head out on any backpacking trip, on any backcountry adventure. Um, offline maps is crucial. Um, so that's where you will see and make sure that uh, you have you have those downloaded. The discover feature um, is one of my favorite. So yeah. we're here in Idaho right now, and I'm not sure what we want to hike. Dan, should we discover a trail? Let's see. Let's see I think we should. This. <laughs> yes, let's discover Idaho. Perfect. So um, it will show you kind of recently viewed routes here, which is a very cool feature. Um, if you somehow get disoriented on your map and are like, where am I? Oh, that was in Utah, Kings Peak. Okay, I'm in Idaho now on my screen. Uh, the recently viewed routes is really cool. Um, great feature. It'll break these out into shorter routes, adventurous routes, and other types of routes. So um, what are you feeling, adventurous or you just want to go. I am, I am super adventurous right now. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. How does, let's just click into this and see what, what kind of stats it gives us. So it breaks out the trail, um, into a couple of different, um, sections. So this section is very strenuous. Uh, looks like it has about 36,000 or 3,600 feet of elevation gain um, and is about 11 miles. What we can do here too yeah, is yeah. zoom in and kind of see what we're working <laughs> with. It looks like it's pretty exposed, um, but it also looks like there could be some shade. Um, and a really good understanding of, of where you are in, in relation to, to the route. So that looks, that looks super pretty too. Cause the way you've got it with that 3d, if you're off to the looking off to the left there, you're just going to see all those mountains the whole time you're hiking. Gorgeous. The sawtooths are incredible. Yeah. Um, you can also see, this is a great way to discover things that might not be, um, prompted for you. So yeah. I'm looking at this Alpine Lake and curious if there's a way to get to this Alpine Lake, this would be a really good place to, um, route build your own route. Looks like there is yeah. a trail that leads you to the Saddleback Lake. Yeah. Um, but if you're feeling yeah. adventurous, like Dan said, he was, we could see about adding to it. So this is where I came up to my toolbar here and I clicked on my, uh, my tool and it's asking if I want to snap to a route or if I want to point draw. So the snap to is very, very helpful when there is already a route established. 
it's not looking like there is a route established to get to the Alpine Lake right below Decker Peak. So let's see about dropping a point here and just roughly drawing up and over that ridge line yep. <clears throat> and seeing what it would take for us to get to that Alpine Lake below Decker Peak. So only a mile and a half, um, but in that mile and a half, you are gaining 1500 feet. So yeah. that is definitely strenuous, doable, but a very good yeah. idea to kind of see um, what what's out there. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I think even <clears throat> like when I point to when I do the draw to point like that, and people are asking how you got to the oh. 3D, by the way, but um. Uh, yeah, like, but like whenever I do the point to draw thing, I, I, I always, cause it's, 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 it's almost as the crow flies to a degree. Cause you're kind of, da, 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 da. I, if it says a mile and a half, I always add, like, I'm going to add an extra half a mile onto that just so I, Definitely. yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you for reading out that comment. I cannot see comments. So I will, uh, mosey on down to the right hand corner of my screen. You see this 2D here. I'm going to click on 2D. Um, and it, it takes me just to the topographical map or satellite imagery of, of what we're looking at. So Decker Peak is our reference point for, for this moment. I'm going to click on 3D and it is going to make the mountains pop. So another way to do this, if you're on a desktop is to, um, click and pull up with your, with two fingers, and you're going to be able to kind of navigate, um, with, with that motion. So great question. Um, if you're, you know, not as technologically savvy and you're having a hard time with that, the 2D, 3D feature here at the bottom right-hand corner is a great way to, to do that. While we're here, I'm going to talk about layers. So the layers bar is right above the 3D box that you can see there. Here is where your entire kind of toolkit of, of layers is. Um, right now, we're in satellite mode. Um, we can go to the hybrid mode where we see um, topo and satellite imagery, which is very cool looking. Super or we helpful. can just go to um, topo imagery. And this is more like what you would see on a paper map if you're more familiar with um, looking at, at mapping this way. So we have all of these really great um, options here. I personally like the satellite because when you hop into um, right below, you'll see preferred base map imagery. If you click on that, it's gonna show you three different options. I love the high quality imagery um, in the summertime, um, but recent imagery is a game changer. That so is literally a game changer. I, I cannot tell you how helpful yes. that is. Okay, sorry. <laughs> No, oh, I love it. Not, if you if you lost like your attention span just now, you need to tune back in, people. Yeah. <laughs> this is coming important. into it. Okay, right well, here, tell yeah. us what what experiences have you had with recent imagery? Why do you love okay. it so much? Yeah, so like, okay, so this is the time of year when you're really not going to use it as much because there's really not a ton of snow unless you're like going to I don't know, try to summon some fourteen or and then maybe there's some snow up there or whatever. But like <clears throat> in the fringe seasons, it's super helpful or like. In the springtime, let's say, let's say it's January, February, and you're like, oh, I, I want to plan a hike in April or May or June. And, um, you know, it's getting closer. You're going to want to look at this, the recent imagery, because it's going to tell you, it's going to give you an idea of how much snow is actually there. Like what's, because otherwise you're calling, like you're, you're guessing, you're calling the Rangers, you're, you know, you're asking somebody that lives out there, like, you're just hoping that somebody knows how much snow is out there. And you know what you're really getting yourself into. And if the map looks really, 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 really white, <laughs> you might want to reconsider what you're doing. 
because it could be a lot more dangerous, could be difficult to get back where you're trying to get to. And um, it's just, a, it, it helps you like, well, yeah, now I know I'm going to have to bring, you know, uh, micro spikes with me or something, or I got to up my, you know, my sleeping game or something, or I might have to bring a better tent or whatever it is. It's just, that's why I use it. So it's super, hundred percent. Yes. Um, and to kind of make it even better at the bottom here, you can see a date range. So yes. the date range is when these images were taken. These images that are showing on the screen right now were taken sometime between uh, July 22nd and August 5th. So they update every 10 days. Um, so they will be updating tomorrow, um, the imagery will be. So that will give you a really good idea of snow melt, um, leaf peeping. This is popular out east for, for leaf peeping. You can get really cool imagery on um, where the foliage is, is in full, full color mode. Um, and you can go back. So if you're planning a trip uh, for a specific kind of date range and you're curious what the year prior looked like, you can just flip back. Um, Dan and I are planning a trip uh, mid-May in the Sawtooths to, um, you know, Thompson Peak here. Oh, shoot. Well, last May, it looks like Thompson Peak still had a bunch of snow on it. So yeah. maybe like we're bringing snowshoes. Yeah, it looks like we're <laughs> skis and snowshoes. Let's, uh, let's hold off and get back to, you know, summer months and see what it will look like later on in July. So you can see that the snow has really melted. Um, there's still a little bit of snow probably in the North facing aspects, uh, of the mountain ranges. But other than that, it looks like you are going to be good to go on your, on your summit up to Thompson peak. Okay. What else? What are some layers? You want to talk through the layers, Dan? And um, I can. Yeah, I mean, I can toggle them on and off. Sure. Yeah. I think um, um, I I I like to check for. Uh, I don't know if this is necessarily what I mean. Just sort of what I do. I like to look for where the wildfires are because, mm -hmm. especially when I <clears throat> travel out east, my, my situation is a little bit different because sometimes I'm just like this is where I'm going. I don't really have a choice. This is where we've decided we're going to go. We're going like, we're not changing it no matter what. And so I look for wildfires just to kind of get an idea of what filming is going to look like. Cause we film a lot of it. So I want to know, is the smoke going to be a problem or not? And so I look for wildfires. Um, I also look for um, the, uh, the, um, I, I, I like the topo map personally. I like the satellite map when I'm looking at, um, like what, what you just talked about, but I like the topo map when I, when I want to know, like from, uh, I want to know the elevation change. Cause I am, I, I'm a, I'm a wimp. I am a big baby <laughs> and I am not a fan of super high elevation changes because I live at 500 feet. <laughs> so going back and forth between Wisconsin and some of these places. Yeah. It kicks my butt. So, um, I like to prep myself for that kind of stuff. Uh, those are the two big ones that I look at um, more than anything else. Those are, those are awesome um, resources. And uh, especially this time of year out West, not as much in the East, although I know it does get smoky out there. Um, we do have all of the historic wildfires as well as um, active wildfires. We have the AQI um, and we have what the, what the smoke looks like. So each layer will give you a layer detail. So you're like, what is this showing me exactly? So you can double click into each of these and it'll give you a little bit more information on what exactly you're looking at. Um, I'm gonna toggle off some of these at the moment. Um, and I'm gonna keep on active wildfires just in case uh, Dan and I are route planning and uh, we just want to make sure that we're not going through any active wildfires. Um, one more that I, I would love to touch on is the government land. Um, this one is really cool to see um, where BLM land is, where national forest, national park, um, what you're looking at 
on the map. Um, you will be able to click on the map and it'll tell you, oh, okay, I'm in the parameters of the national forest at this moment. Um, whereas I was maybe thinking of camping here and that is in Stanley. So probably, you know, could find some camping, but with all of this national forest around us, let's look for some other place. Uh, yeah. While on, on this topic, we can toggle on the private land layer and I don't want to zoom into anyone's property, um, but you will be able to see um, squares pull up where there is private property, Sawtooth Mountain Ranch, LLC. This is That's a lucky property. guy right there. Look at yeah. all that property. He's got. I need to become his friend. Yeah, yeah no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> or her friend. Um, oh, yeah. But this is so crucial, uh, especially not in a little bit more densely populated areas where um, there, there are residential communities around, but you see a trail and you're not sure if it's going through someone's property um, or if it is part of some, some national forest. So uh, always double check to make sure you are on government land. Um, if you see some something on someone's private land, um, you know, you can reach out to them and ask permission, but try and steer clear. Um, so with all of that said, how are you feeling, Dan? Good. Yeah. Super good. Um, okay. I was going to say something else and I lost it. It's gone. Just keep going. Um, okay. It'll come back. It'll come back to me. Cool. So are we all feeling pretty good about, um, the app? on desktop. We kind of have acclimated ourselves a little bit before Dan and I jump into um, the I mean, steps. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot. I think there's this, you can, you can do like what we just showed you. I feel like you're 90% of the way, like just being able to do things and you can dive deep too, though. Like there's the other 10% is like a deep dive into all kinds of cool stuff that this will do. And it translates super well to my phone. I feel like because most of the stuff that you're doing here, I can do on my phone. All of it. Yeah. Yes. And when you download offline maps, or if you create routes on your desktop, it will automatically transfer onto your mobile device. So there's no, there's no hassle there. If you're worried about, well, I'm going to be using my phone and I'm not going to be taking my computer along with me. Totally fine. It would be kind of kind of rare if you were taking your desktop along with you on a hike, but um, if if that's what you're into, you know. <laughs> but yeah, this route. Maybe they have trouble seeing. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I can can't, relate to they, that. They forgot their readers and they need their <laughs> desktop. So, um, so this route that we'll create, or any route, any waypoint, um, will transfer onto your phone folders. Yep all of that. So without further ado, um, could you walk us through your trip planning process for this backpacking, um, trip that you did here? Like maybe oh, a couple, this you know, maybe five minutes to explain yeah, yeah. how you found it, how you, um, how you built out the route. Did you go off of the route? Um, mm -hmm. Walk yeah. us through that. Yeah, so um, I did this hike with uh, my buddy Eric, Eric Hansen. And um, we we just, I, I think I was the one that picked the sawtooths. I'm pretty sure I was. And um, yeah, we just were like, uh, let's just get to a cool lake. And let's just kind of go from there and just to see what we can do. So what I did was we I downloaded... I'll just say that you got to make sure that you you have cell service before you make sure that it's on your phone, like triple check everything that it's all downloaded on the maps are downloaded on your phone. Just that should go without saying. So we make sure that we do that. Uh, we started at that red X, I think. I'm not controlling this, by the way, so it's yes. hard for me to. But yeah, the red X is uh, where the where the um, where the parking lot is. Um, <clears throat> and then we hiked in, I can't remember honestly, which way we hiked. I don't know. I think we might've went up to goat Lake first and goat Lake, um, it, is, is amazing. And somehow at goat Lake, Eric decides to convince me that we're going to try to summit a peak. 
And I'm just like, I don't summit peaks. Like this is, I've never summited a peak because I am from <sighs> Wisconsin and you're not allowed to summit peak if you're a peak if you're from Wisconsin. Okay, I'll just throw that <laughs> is out. That, is that so? Yes. I didn't know that. Especially, yes. <laughs> and so he's like, we're going to summit a peak. And now I'm literally pooping my pants the oh entire time goodness. because I'm freaking out. But we made a video on this. So um, uh, we'll put it in the, the chat or whatever, or we'll send it somehow. So you can you can see that this is all legit, and you can see how um, we were able to. This is a this was an easy route to that. This is an actual trail, so you know we just make we hike the trail, and then when you get over to Goat Lake, you can. I I love that when you look at this three D thing, you can start to see just where the elevation starts to kick your butt, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of false summits just to get up to Goat Lake. If you don't know what a false summit is, it's like. Oh, there's the top. Shoot, that's Wrong. not the top. <laughs> oh, well, there's the top. No, nope, that's not the top. There's another 100 feet we got to go. And uh, they're terrible. So oh. we get up, we camp on this beautiful lake called Goat Lake. If you can get up there, highly recommend it. Oh my gosh, it's like absolutely. Was it, was it very crowded or did you no, guys? No, there was it? no one there. We no were way. the only ones there. Yeah. And then we decided that we were going to summit. Oh man, I can't remember the name of the peak. It's one of these peaks. Um, I think it's just past, like, um, on the other side of that, one of the saddles there, uh, probably to the lower left, somewhere lower over there. Left. Yeah. Where I the think. waypoint is? Um, <clears throat> or around Yeah, yeah where your arrow is right there. Yep. You're just kind of going over it. Like, so if you can now, if you go like southwest. <laughs> yonder my point is is by looking at onyx and realizing what the past looked like we realized it was going to be very difficult to get over and we were at sort of a fringe season ish and the snow was there too and we weren't prepped for it so uh yeah so we we and then also i'll just say this too if you get into a sticky situation um, you know, and you see other hikers come in the opposite direction. You need to talk to them, like for sure. Like, hey, what's it like ahead? Tell us what the, what it was like for you. Have you been over in this area that we're thinking about going? And they can give you some good intel. So that's what we did, and we found out that there were some young guys, like half my age, that were like barely made it through there. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, oh my no. Goodness. So I'm, did I'm you fail? Doing. Well, we decided at that moment that we were going to go out, and that's why this isn't a loop. We decided that we were going to go back down and then we went back to where um came up yep. this way. Yeah, we came back up that way. And then we just started hiking, 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 and we camped at this other lake. I think it's called Sawtooth, Sawtooth Lake. Sawtooth Lake. And that lake is 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 that wow. is just absolutely gorgeous too. So you see the pink line. That's actually my line from a previous oh, trip wow, really? to Sawtooth. So oh, cool. Dan and I have hiked the yeah. same. Hey, what did you think of it? You remember it? Oh my gosh, gorgeous. It's it was, next level. It was insane. I remember um kind of coming through this part and seeing how the sawtooths got their name. I mean, they are some jagged peaks. Yes, very jagged, jagged. peaks. And talking about a false summit, I had a false alpine lake. I thought that this <laughs> alpine lake here was was sawtooth lake and then um quickly realized that still, <laughs> like, had, nope. still had some nope. elevation. Yeah, we got a ways to go yet. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But absolutely so, stunning. Yes. It, it's fun too, because you can look ahead on the map and like, if you're, if you can zoom in maybe on Sawtooth Lake yeah. from like a, and then maybe click on Topo, uh, just yeah. show like the topographical map. It's you can, this is where I like to look because I like to see at this, at this way, uh, just kind of where I could potentially start to camp and even see if this lake is even campable. So like you could see on the the far end of the lake there, the upper part of the screen there, there's no way you're going to camp around there because the topographical map is showing you that that's like a deep dive into the water. Like you already know, yep, if we come around that way, we're not going to camp over there. But you could see on now this right side of the lake over here, where the blue line is where we were hiking at the northern end there kind of where that little peninsula is at the top that's where we went and camped because we realized just by looking at the topo that there is some flat areas over there it's like okay yeah we got a place if we do hike over there we're gonna have a place to camp because sometimes you see these alpine lakes and you think 
I'm going to camp there. And then you realize you're not going to camp there. And then you just added like another four miles to your hike, you know, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh gosh, I can't do it. So, Definitely. so we spent the day just kind of looking at this whole area, hanging out there and just trying to decide which, where we were going to try to summit. And then they convinced me to summit where that, where the blue X is there. That was the summit that we went to. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's no route here. So this is where you, we had to do just kind of a scramble. You know, yeah. Scramble our way up. It's not super technical. There is a yeah. couple spots where you're like on all fours, but it's not that big. Of a oh, thing. how cool, Dan. But yeah, I, I, but for me though, there's a lot, there's a lot of barf on the side of that mountain for me. Okay. Not literally, but figuratively, because I was very nervous to do it and you can watch that video i was not having fun but when i got up there it was the best feeling ever oh that's awesome and, uh yeah it was amazing so um yeah you can see it's 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 kind of gnarly trying to get up there without we weren't prepped for it like we weren't like this was like we're there hey let's summit a peak but that's eric that's a that's Eric's a good friend though you know pushing you a little bit mm -hmm. outside your comfort zone and you made it and yeah. now you can tell the tale which is yeah which is awesome yeah yeah, yeah. it so, was super fun it was super very fun. very cool well thanks yeah, for sharing thanks. all of that with us um i think that the the takeaways from this is before you go out and um have a full either day on the mountain hiking backpacking whatever it may be always have a pre-hike checklist um make sure that you're scouting out beforehand, make sure that you are downloading the offline map. So when you're yes. out of service or you're in airplane mode, you still have the map with you. Um, turn the tracker on so you can see where you have gone and how to get back to, um, the car and, um, just be prepared in those senses. So, um, very cool. And I think if, if you want to share any more, uh, I know that this was kind of quick. Um, we took a tour of the desktop app. We got acclimated with the different tools. Um, you can see here that there are already the trails in the blue that you can follow along with. Um, you can click on the different, um, hikes that you might be interested in from the discovery feature um, and learn more about uh, each hike before you actually go on it. Very important. Um, and I, I think thing. we can answer a couple of the questions now that are in I, the Q and A. I got one more super thing I wanna say real fast, but yes. that's okay. So like uh, when, when it says strenuous and very strenuous, so um, I know there's other mapping apps out there that say those things and i'm convinced that it was like somebody's 80 year old grandma telling me it was strenuous because it's a walk in the park i feel like onyx is reality like i feel like when it says strenuous it's gonna be strenuous when it says very strenuous you probably better have a little bit of experience you know to go up right. there if it says moderate you're probably gonna be fine yeah and uh, i think so i i I would, this is the, those, uh, whoever's putting those on there or wh however, I would, I would follow those like legitimately, like just as a really good guide for your hike. And so you're not finding yourself in trouble when you're out there. So. Yes. Fair, that's great. Um, and we do take a lot of pride in that as well. Our, uh, engineers and developmental team have done a great job at making sure that we are pointing people in the right direction. Um, when you can see the elevation scale and the different color gradients, it matches with what is on the trail. So if you see a little red mark on the trail, you know, it's about to get steep. If you see the yep. yellow green, it's, it's, it's chill, um, flat to, you know, downhill. And, um, that's a great point. And, uh, it's cool to hear kind of what, what your perspective is on that. Yeah. So. Awesome. Okay. So we are back with the 70% off access code. Um, if you were trying to find your phone at the beginning, um, now is your time. Scan that. 
So we have some questions. Um, let me read through them. How to calculate how much food to pack? Oh, that's a great question. Do you have any tips on that? Uh, my rule of thumb is if it's dry food, I try to, it's like two pounds a day. Uh, I mean that, but that's just like for the general person. But uh, for me, like, you know, sometimes you find like when you're on backing, pack, backing, packing trips, backing, packing, what? Backpacking trips <laughs> that like, I, I lose my appetite sometimes. Yeah. Like I just get out there. I'm just not hungry. Other times I'm like famished. Yes. And then I, the other rule of thumb for me is uh, once I do that, I try to pack at least one to two more meals, like just in just case, in case. Yeah. just yeah. so my mom is happy, right? <laughs> right? So, but that's, oh, that's yeah. what I do. He's the worries of the mothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then pack lots of like, uh, the other thing too is if you're, if you're wondering about that kind of stuff, I like to pack um, little treats like like really sugary like candies like gummy bears and stuff like that like you, if, if you're the guy that busts out gummy bears everybody starts drooling i'm just gonna yes. throw that out there you're, you're like, everyone's favorite hey, uh, hey, i've never had that uh, brand before uh, i wonder if i try that and you're like no i carried it out here so yes perfect <laughs> yeah it, it is such a personal question you know based off of um the amount that you typically eat are you training and what are you eating during any training period of time um, we have one about water as well in Onyx backcountry, you will be able to see if there is a river, if there's a stream, if there is a, a spring and of course, any kind of lake. So that is also a really good time to, in your e-scouting before you go out on hikes, take a look at it and see, um, how far in between you're going to be yeah. from a lake or a river, um, and really try and plan, plan your water out. Yeah. And also make sure that you're calling ahead of time. Some of these places, cause some of those, it'll show it on there, but sometimes they're seasonal and they may, it may not actually be there. And there were other times, like when I was hiking through Zion national park where the, the they had some sort of a virus going through the water and it's like, you can't even filter it. So yeah. you just got to ask a lot of questions ahead of time too. And typically where you get your permit, um, before backpacking, which we didn't touch on, um, which we could right now, there will be signs if there is an outbreak of some sort of, um, water contaminant, um, on, on the poster or on the, on the station, um, yeah. hopping back though, permitting, could you tell us how you get your permits or how you find that information? Yeah, um, <clears throat> recreation.gov is a good place. Um, if you if you want to go somewhere where there's permits, uh, I I personally like to hike where there isn't permits because it just makes my planning process so much easier. Uh, but the problem with that is that you are going to hike in a place that's a lot more impacted, which isn't terrible, but it's typically a lot more people there. Um, yeah. Uh, and a lot of places are walk-up permits too. Like sometimes you get there and you're in, and make sure that you're doing that too, because they don't, they're not trying to like, it, this isn't some government overreach. It's they, it's when you fill out those permits, that's just a way to let people know, Hey, you're there. It's an extra safety measure. Yeah. You know, if something does happen. They can find you yes. um, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I get, if I do get permits, it's typically way in advance and uh, I do it online. Perfect. Yeah. So. Um, you can pretty much Google anything. These yeah. Days. <laughs> um, okay. Next question. This one is a little bit, um, more specific to higher altitude. Um, Dan, you could probably speak on this. I live at a pretty high altitude. Uh, I can always feel it if I'm going, you know, above seven, 8,000 feet, I can feel the difference, um, coming from somewhere that's very close to sea level. How do you plan for trips where it's going to be pretty high elevation gain? Um, so I'm actually looking at it. It's all across the, my studio here, but I've got, I, uh, I just, I reached out to my doctor mm -hmm. and I told him that this is what I do. And several times a year, I'm heading out somewhere where I'm going to be at higher elevations. And he just gave me a, a medication that I could take that helps me. And I'm not, 
I'm not a doctor, but that's just what I did. Cause and it really, it, 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 it doesn't stop me from getting elevation sickness. It yeah. reduces the symptoms of elevation sickness. Yeah. So for instance, um, like, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago, I was in the San Juan mountains in Colorado and we started at like, I, I spent one night at like 7,000 feet in Durango. I think it was in Durango. And uh, the next, so very little time to acclimate. We we are we trailheads at like ten five. Yeah. We camped at twelve five that next night, mm-hmm. and and I was I was rough. Like I was getting nauseous, and I was getting headaches, and uh, like I felt sick. I could it, oh, the symptoms of the flu started to kick in. But um, yeah, had I not been taking that, I think I would have been a lot worse and so i think if you have the time you should acclimate for a couple nights if it's possible like get to where you can yeah just train your body to be there if you start to feel elevation sickness the the instant um reduction of elevation sickness is to get lower so go back down go back down a thousand feet if it's real bad if you can if you can do it and also I drink, I drink a lot of water. And sometimes when I get elevation sickness, I don't like to drink water because my body wants to reject it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I bring like uh, drink mixes, a lot of electrolytes and things that I can sort of trick my body into. Yeah. Drinking. yeah so. Hydration um, weeks, you know, if you, if you know you you're going to higher elevations weeks in advance, um, just start hydrating and um, hopefully that, that will help. Yeah. Taking it slow. Uh, if you have time to acclimate, um, great question. Thank you to whoever asked that we have a couple, um, on backpacking alone, specifically, you know, women, um, I would say, obviously do what you're comfortable with. I think that everyone is different in what they're comfortable with. Um, I have backpacked alone. I've camped alone. Um, it can be eerie. It also is, is great to do your research beforehand. Um, and you know, there are a lot of devices now that you can call, um, without cell phone service, if there's an emergency or if you get injured. Um, so just a lot of prep work and, um, and knowing where you're at, letting people know where you're going, et cetera, would be my, my tip yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. for sure. Um, okay. We have time for one more. Let's see. There are so many good ones. Um, okay. Let's see. So fast packing. Have you ever, I'm out. I'm you're out. out. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. Forget it. I, my fast packing is, 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 is about, yeah, no, no, don't ask me to fast pack or I'm, I'm not coming. Okay. Me. Dan's out. He's not, yeah. he's not the guy. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> no. Nope. Um, maybe one day or just hard, hard no. <clears throat> That's a hard no. Hard Man, no. wait, whew, I know people that do it and they are better men than me. I will just say that. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I can't do that. That's crazy. But they're, they're, that's wild, man. When I see people doing that, I, I don't know. I just like to enjoy. Yes. Yeah. Fast head, fast packing equals sprained ankle. Yes. Thank you, Brad. I'm with you, Brad. You're a smart man. Oh, that's funny. Me and Brad, I'll hike back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Well, um, is there anything else you would, you would want to share as we start to wrap up? Um, yeah, I, I would just say, this, you know, if you have, I'm, I'm hoping everybody here at least has Onyx. I mean, because if you don't, you're missing out on the, like, the 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 cheapest piece of gear that you could possibly get that's going to make your life so much easier out there, and that you're getting it for seventy percent off. Like, what are you kidding me? Like, it's usually thirty bucks. So what's the, I can't do math, but I know that's not a lot of money. Okay, so all you cheapskates out there, scan it. This is your opportunity. That's what I want to say. Perfect. Um, yeah. And with 75 or with 70% off, that is, um, really a great, great deal that you, you won't find, um, very often. So, um, hop on that deal and we are going to do our giveaway. 
um, drum roll. We're going to have someone hop on here, I believe, and let us know if we have a giveaway winner. Let's see. Somebody was just asking about campsites. I got a video coming out this weekend about campsites, finding campsites. Throwing that out there. Little plug. All right. Can everyone see the click to spin? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Some wheel gonna, of fortune in here. Yeah, I'm going to get a seizure. Yeah. <laughs> Chris. Chris. Amazing. And we will, um, we'll contact you guys, uh, after this to, to make sure that you guys get your prizes shipped out to you. So Chris, thank you so much. Congratulations. I wonder if, if we're in this list, Dan, do you think we could win something? I, we, I don't know, man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, we're the we're the only winners. Could you imagine, <laughs> Tyler? <laughs> congratulations, Tyler. Tyler. The internet can be so fun sometimes. Oh my gosh! All righty, Dan, are you going to Banff anytime soon? I leave on Saturday. Oh, perfect. Yeah, flying to Canada on Saturday. Oh, yeah. Dan, when are you going to BAMP? Saturday morning. Lyle. Congratulations, Lyle. Yeah. Woo. Lyle, what up? Good job. Okay, so these next two um, will be winning the Couch to Confidence Grand Prize. The Grand Prize. <laughs> Here we go, folks. Cross your fingers. Is it Daniel or Jesse? Jesse. Jesse. <laughs> we have a winner. Coming to you, Congratulations. Jesse. Congratulations. Couch to confidence. Joy. Oh, is it Joy or Jay? Jay. Jay. Congratulations. Jay brings joy. Jay he brings does. joy. Aww. He brings joy. Well, this was so fun. Thank yeah. you uh, for joining us this evening. Thank you to everyone who hung around for an hour. Uh, we hope you learned something. This uh, will be recorded or has been recorded and will be up on our YouTube channel tomorrow. So if you want to go back as a reference to anything, this will be live on uh, Onyx Backcountry's YouTube tomorrow. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Any last words? <laughs> go hike <laughs> go hike be prepared yeah be prepared exactly awesome well we appreciate all of you and um hope to see you at our next webinar yeah all righty bye everyone